Hello and welcome to WP Forms. Today I'm going to show you how to allow a user to submit a blog post to your WordPress site by using the WP Forms plugin. Allowing users to submit blog posts to your site is not only a great way to publish more content if you find yourself struggling to find time to make any posts yourself, but it can also increase your readership by offering different perspectives on topics and help with community engagement. Without further ado, let's get started. After logging into your WordPress site, We'll first go to the plugins page and install WP Forms to your site. If you haven't done so already, you can download the plugin from the Downloads tab in your WP Forms account area. If you don't have a WP Forms account yet, you can go to wpforms.com forward slash YouTube to get 50% off your purchase. We can head back to our WordPress site and on the plugins page, we'll click on the Add New button on the top left corner and then click on the Upload Plugin button. We'll then choose our file, select WP Forms, and activate it once it's done installing. Afterwards, we'll need to verify your copy of WP Forms by entering the license key in the settings page of WP Forms. You can find the key on the downloads page of your WP Forms account, and once the license key has been verified, we can get to work. The very first thing we'll want to do before we create our form is to make sure that the post submissions add-on is installed and activated. So we'll want to go over to the left sidebar and under WP Forms, we're going to click on the add-ons tab. On the add-ons page, let's scroll until we find the post submissions add-on, click on the install add-on button, and once the status has changed to active, we're ready to head into the form builder. Let's head over to the left sidebar again, and under WP Forms, we'll click on the add new tab. WP Forms comes with several different form templates to get you up and running as quickly and easily as possible, or you can create a brand new form entirely from scratch if you prefer. But for this tutorial, Let's go ahead and select the blog post submission form template. Once the template is loaded into the form builder, you'll see two different sections in the form itself, author details and create a blog post. The author details section is fairly self-explanatory. This is where users will enter their contact information, like their name and email address, and they'll also be able to include a short bio about themselves. The next section, create a blog post, is where users will be able to enter their content. The form has a field for the post title, the post content, and even a file upload field where a user can include a featured image. A user can also submit a post excerpt that will be displayed on the site and also specify which category this post belongs to. Keep in mind that this template is entirely customizable. If certain existing fields won't apply to your particular form, you can simply remove them by hovering over them and clicking on the red trash can icon when it appears. You can also add new fields to your form by selecting them from the left panel and dragging them over to the right. It all depends on what information you'd like included in the blog posts. Each field can also be customized on its own, so let's take a look at two specific fields in our form, the file upload field for the post featured image and the drop down field for the post category. Let's go ahead and click on the file upload field. As you can see, the left panel is now displaying the settings for this particular field. You can change the field's label and description, as well as specify which file types you're going to allow users to upload. By default, we've got a few options right now, like JPGs, JPEGs, PNGs, and GIFs, but you can change these to whatever you'd like or leave it blank if you don't have any specification requirements. Just be sure to separate each extension with a comma. You can also specify the maximum file size you'll allow, or you can leave it blank. You'll also have to keep something very important in mind. If this field is left blank, the maximum file size will be defaulted to the maximum that your website's server will allow. You can find this value by hovering over to the tooltip icon beside the field. As you can see, it tells us here that the maximum size our site's server will allow is 20 megabytes, so any files that go over this limit will not be accepted. So even if you enter, say, 50 megabytes in this field, your server will only allow a user to upload a file that is up to 20 megabytes in size. If you need this limit increased, then you'll need to contact your site's hosting provider. The file upload field in general will allow you to give users the option to upload more than one file at a time, but since we're using this field for a blog post's featured image, we'll leave this max file number at one. Whatever image a user uploads will be displayed next to their post on your WordPress site. 
Sometimes this is shown as a thumbnail image on a page. By default, these files are stored in the WP Forms folder inside the uploads directory of your site, which can be kind of a pain to access if you want to use these images at a later point in time. But if you decide to store them in the WordPress Media Library instead, they'll be easier to access for future use. To store an uploaded image to your site's media library, click on the Advanced Options tab. You'll then see the checkbox labeled Store File in WordPress Media Library. Once this is checked, any images uploaded in this field will be stored and accessible in your site's media library. Next, let's look at our category field. You can customize the label and description of this field, but as you'll notice here under the Choices section, it says that choices are dynamically populated from the category's taxonomy. If you don't understand what that means at first, that's okay. Basically, all this means is that WP Forms pulls in a dynamic list of categories for this field. It's a lot easier than typing them all in manually, and it also means that the list of categories on the front end will always match the categories on your blog. Let's go ahead and explore these settings a bit further and click on the Advanced Options tab. Near the bottom of these settings, you'll see a dropdown called Dynamic Choices, which is where we can select where we want our category choices to be auto-populated from. You'll have three different options, Off, Post Type, or Taxonomy. If you select Off, then you'll be able to manually create the choices for this dropdown field the same way you normally would, by editing the choice label and either adding or removing any additional choices. If you change the Dynamic Choices option to Post Type, then the Category drop-down field will be auto-populated with the list of post types that you've created, but since you can have more than one post type, you'll need to select exactly which post type you'd like to use as the source. You can do this in the field below called Dynamic Post Type Source. Currently, we have two sources, Posts or Pages. If you select Posts, then the choices in our Categories drop-down field in our form will be a list of posts that we've already made on our site. And if you select Pages, then the choices will instead be a list of pages that we created on our site. If you change the Dynamic Choices post type to Taxonomy, then the field below will change and be called Dynamic Taxonomy Source, and we're going to have two options, Categories or Tags. The same logic still applies here, though. If you select Taxonomy as your dynamic choice, then it will either use the existing categories or tags that you've created for your site. Now that we have all of our form fields set up, let's click on the Save button on the top right corner, and we're ready to make sure that our form fields are correctly mapped to our post fields. This will automatically send each field to the right place in your blog post so that you don't have to manually copy and paste each submission you receive. To start, go to the left and click on the Settings tab and then on Post Submissions. The default settings here will suit most blog posts, but it's worth looking through them just to know what they are and what they do. Make sure that Post Submissions is on, otherwise any entry submitted to this form will not post. In the next option, Post Title, you'll be able to select which form field the post title will be coming from. If you click on the drop-down, you'll see your two options. We're going to select the field on our form called Post Title. You can go through each setting to make sure that the right field from your form is mapped to the right place. Our post content field is mapped to the post content setting, the post excerpt field is mapped to the post excerpt field, etc. For post type, you can choose whether to add this user entry as a blog post or as a page. If you've created any custom post types on your site, you can select one of those here too. For post status, you can choose to publish each entry immediately or you can choose to require approval so that you can review the post first before you publish it. Finally, for the post author setting, you can choose the author that will automatically be assigned to this blog post. You can either choose someone who has a registered account on your site, like an administrator, or if you select the current user option, then it'll display the name that's submitted in the form. Once we're done mapping our form fields, Let's save our progress, and we're ready to set up our form's notification and confirmation settings. The admin email in the Send To Email Address field refers to the admin email address for your WordPress site, so if you'd like the notification to go to a different email address, you can make that change in this field here. 
You can also set it up so that the user will receive a copy of this notification email as a sort of confirmation email that their form was sent. To do this, you'll simply use the Smart tag that belongs to the email field in your form. You can click on the Show Smart Tags text on the top right corner of this field and then click on the option that says Email. You'll then see the Smart tag that corresponds to the email field in your form. Just be sure to separate each Smart tag or manually entered email address with a comma. Next, you can customize the subject line for the notification email as well as the name the email will say it's from. You can enter an email address in the Reply To field if you'd like users to be able to reply to this email. Finally, in the Message portion, you can include a custom message if you'd like, or you can leave it blank. The All Fields Smart tag that appears by default just means that the message portion of this email will contain all of the filled in fields that the user submitted in your form. Once these settings are configured, let's set up our confirmation settings. You can choose between three different options that the user will see after they've submitted the form Message, Show Page, or Go to URL. We'll stay with the default message option for now. Once you've made your changes, click on the Save button on the top right corner, and we're ready to embed our blog post form to our site. Go to your dashboard and click on Pages, Add New, and let's add a title. From there, we'll click on the plus icon below the title and either click on the Browse All option to find WP Forms, or you can type WP Forms in the available search bar. We'll then click on our blog post form, hit Publish, and we're all set. You now know how to create an easy to use but powerful blog post form for your WordPress site. Before you go live, be sure to test your new form thoroughly to make sure that everything is working as it should. If you have any questions or concerns, please be sure to visit wpforms.com and check out our documentation page, which has step-by-step -step written instructions for all of our features and add-ons. If you need any extra technical help, please go to our contact page and reach out to our support team. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed and found this video helpful, subscribe to our YouTube channel, where you can learn more about building smarter forms with WP Forms through our how-to videos and more.